Cramped and congested conditions found in the approaches to most of London's railway termini demand the utmost track efficiency if the maximum operating convenience is to be achieved. Design of junction work must also ensure long life for the track with reduced maintenance of both track and rolling stock. To achieve these aims at St Pancras, the relaying program for several years was combined and the whole of the approaches relayed during the summer of 1947. All the track work was manufactured by Messrs Taylor Brothers of San Diego as a built-up and timbered layout. The material was delivered in components and prefabricated in sidings adjacent to the junction. No convenient yard was available where the work could be done, but by cooperation with the operating department, several coal lines were placed at the disposal of the engineer's department. After prefabrication, the sections of point and crossing work were loaded onto wagons and taken to the site by train. An extreme width of 12 and a half feet of some of the units necessitated out of gauge working for the quarter mile journey from the yard to the site. of removing spent ballast was done in advance of the actual relaying operations. The total relaying program extended over 14 Sundays, starting on June the 1st and finishing on September the 7th. Of these, five Sundays were allocated for loading the spent ballast previously opened out. In all, some 1,100 tons were removed. During the time ballast was being loaded, trains were able to run into and out of the station without interference. On some Sundays, when actual relaying work was in progress, the partial or total closing of the station was necessary. The actual work of relaying was carried out in nine stages and the same procedure was followed with each. Immediately occupation of the track was obtained by the engineers, the task of removing old material started. power was used to the maximum possible extent, switch and crossing components being loaded directly into suitable placed wagons. There was, of course, much work that had to be done by manual labor. Closure rails, sleepers, and sometimes timbers, as well as small items such as fish plates, chains, and keys, had to be loaded by hand. So that minimum interference to traffic might be caused, each Sunday's work was carefully timetabled, and each stage had to be completed to the laid down time schedule.
sixth stage in the planned relaying program, which was reached on Sunday, July the 27th, was by far the most intricate. Work started at 10 p.m. on Saturday night and continued until 6 a.m. on Monday morning. By dawn on Sunday, the old material had been taken out and loaded, in this case in complete sections, up to a maximum width of 12 and a half feet. In the dim morning light, the train leaves the site. On an adjacent line, the new material stands ready. As soon as the trainload of old material cleared the site, the work of putting the new into position started. On this occasion, a 36-ton breakdown crane was used for swinging the new prefabricated track into position. From the top of the famed St Pancras single-span roof, the gaps in the track where the old material has been removed stand out clearly. From five minutes past midnight on Sunday until 2 a.m. on Monday morning, all lines into and out of St Pancras were blocked. Emergency operating arrangements of an elaborate nature were involved. of relaying the new track is well underway. The gangs work in relays. The complete job involved all track for a distance of 240 yards and includes some 40 sets of points and 50 crossings. On this particular Sunday, the work comprised the renewal of four double slips and one lead with double trap points. As sections of the new track were placed in position by the crane, the gangs proceeded with the job of adjusting the track, fitting fish plates, and when necessary, tightening chair screws and inserting keys. Added complication to this relaying job was the fact that the track is supported on the brick arches of St Pancras stables. The arches themselves were in need of repair, and a proportion of them were filled with rubble and grouted up. This work was carried out concurrently with the relay. In addition to the normal work of lifting and slewing, a considerable amount of adjustment of existing track to meet the new junction was necessary. From the roof of St Pancras, the progress made can readily be seen. The gaps in the track have almost gone, although there is still considerable activity and will be for some hours to come. 
Final adjustments must be made and the track got into fit condition to carry the traffic which must pass over it on the morrow. The stage arrives which all engineers are glad to reach when the last unit goes in. Once safely in position, the crane can be dispensed with. Naturally, very considerable signal and telegraph work was involved in this junction renewal scheme. In addition to the normal renewal of point rodding, signal wires and other apparatus, the opportunity was taken of installing up-to-date equipment both on the track and in the signal box. This work comprised the track circuit control of all points relayed and signals affected, thus dispensing with lifting bars formerly used. Consequently, the manual operation of the junction signal box was eased. During the course of the relaying and signal modernization, no less than 87 electric lever locks have been installed in the signal box. Illuminated diagrams indicating whether the track is occupied or clear were also provided in the box. Both from an engineering and signal and telegraph aspect, the sixth stage of the St Pancras Junction Renewal Scheme is considered to have been one of the largest operations carried out in one occupation on the LMS system. That it was carried out successfully is in no small measure due to the close cooperation which existed between all departments involved in the task.